camera crane, camera dolly steadicam. When you look at behind the scenes footage from major films, you see that almost every modern film production works mainly with these things. So what if I told you that you can make almost any kind of such shots using just a Ronin, even if you don't have a special dedicated and expensive equipment for it, you just need some creativity and good ideas. Stop that. To show you this in the best possible way and maybe inspire some of you, me and my dream team decided to shot three short stories every place, every day and everyone. In each of these, we want to achieve a different effect by using only RS2 in such a way and with such accessories that everyone could do it even with a small team and small budget. So let's get started. Chapter 1. Every place. In this story we used the Ronin in only two ways, totally handheld and by using a rope. About the rope thing, I will tell you in a moment because the last story also be about it, so let's start with the easiest but one of the most cinematic shots. A tracking shot, it's all about moving with the actor or subject. Such shots are made to move the audience directly into the scene. In my opinion, the most professional way to take such shots is to combine the Ronin with a Steadicam, because it absorbs all the weight and all the unnecessary movements. But of course, the Ronin itself is basically made for this type of work, so if you want to get the best possible effect, I have some quick tips for you. First the weight of your gimbal. Use only the necessary accessories. For example, you don't need a second monitor for a shot like this if you have a 5 inch display in front of your eyes. So remember, reduce the weight of your kit and you will see how much easier it is to work with. Second tip, how to move. Bend your knees to separate your legs from the rest of your body. Ninja walk. This is a pretty weird position, but the effects are quite good. You can also try holding the Ronin not vertically as usual, but horizontally, so that the tilt stabilization can't handle the annoying visible footsteps even better. Last tip, best settings. In the case of handheld shots, I usually use only two modes, pan and tilt follow and pan follow. There are situations where I need two axes to follow and shots where I need the Ari Trinity motion effects with locked tilt follow. But you should also try a pretty cool option. You can turn off the three axes following completely any time in any mode by pressing and holding the button on the front. This activate lock mode which means that no axis can follow your movements. You can also activate this mode in the menu, select custom mode and choose which axis you want to turn off. And I can honestly say that this mode gives pretty cool results because Ronin will not react to any of your movements. Which is a very helpful and dynamic scene and talking about this kind of shots let's jump to the next story.
This type of shots where the subject is moving faster is quite difficult to shot just handheld because it is hard to run in a stable position with a gimbal. You can of course use special dedicated equipment to take this shot and I highly recommend this solution, but if you don't have this option, you can do it differently. We made these shots in two ways, using an electric Segway style vehicle and the other using the simplest and cheapest bike trailer. In the case of the Segway, the advantage is that you can take such shots basically anywhere as long as there is a road and it is safe and comfortable to drive. And what is important, you can do it completely by yourself. The only difficult part on a Segway is precise framing, focusing and watching the road at the same time. That's why it is a little easier in two-person version with a trailer. The driver is focused on the road and the operator on the shot. Obviously, these are not the only ways. Actually, you can ride on anything that has wheels, but always remember, try to do it safely. In this situation, the speed of movement generates a lot of vibration, so I recommend you to turn on the super smooth mode. But remember, for better results, secure the lens with a lens strap. This is very important if you have a long lens and even more if you use some kind of adapter like Metabones, because every adapter creates extra distance and a place where vibration is generated. In both situations, we had quite limited body movement, so I chose to control the running using only the joystick in custom mode with all axes follow off. Pure stabilization. A few times we moved very close to the talent, so the shots required a lot of precision. Which is why I wanted to make the tilt and pan movement as smooth as possible, that's why I set the joystick smoothness to 15, speed of movements only to 20. And to be honest, the result was in my opinion really awesome. Even with a small joystick, the movement was very cinematic. Also, keep in mind that in the app, you have a few more options for changing the joystick settings. You have not only speed and smoothness, but also deadband settings and endpoints, which in some situations are extremely useful. Quick tip. Spend some time and learn the touchscreen menu and also the setting options in the DGA app, and trust me, the time you spend on this will pay you back on the set. Camera dolly push and pull out. I think it's very hard to find a movie that doesn't have this type of shots. It's one of my favorites, used in the right place, emphasize a moment in the scene. A camera dolly and special tracks or slider are usually used to make these shots, but see how easy it is with a Ronin. For the basic version, you just need a tripod. Mount the Ronin on it and you have a small slider, super simple. But if you want a longer range of motion, you can use a monopod and build a small camera jib. You just need to attach the monopod to the tripod, mount the Ronin on one side and the counterweight on the other. I use a Manfrotto clamp as a Ronin mount, 30mm clamps as a monopod mount to a tripod and about 8kg as a counterweight. What I absolutely love about this setup is if you have 3D focus and a Raven eye with active track, you only need two fingers to make a shot like this. You don't worry about framing, you don't worry about focus and all you have to do is just move the wall thing around. Of course, keep in mind that you can also take these shots differently, but you need to find a way to move as smoothly as possible or to attach the Ronin to something that moves in such a way. And that's what I want to show you in the last story. The thing I absolutely love about RS2 is how versatile it is, because you can attach it to almost anything that moves and control it in several ways. 
so in the basketball scenes and the oval staircase we made it with a rope. We wanted to achieve the effect of a large techno crane and high speed vertical camera dolly. In this type of installation I recommend using the RS2 base plate, it is designed for safety and functionality in any type of such installation. But of course you can use Ronin with the original handle, however you should find some kind of extra safety point always without exception. In my case I made it using a NATO clamp and a steel ring. With this solution I can use a safety strap to attach Ronin anywhere. Rope installations looks pretty complicated, but it's easier than you think. Just imagine that you want to make a long rope swing. But remember about safety and make sure you have everything under control. I will show you three basic ways to take these shots. The first version is a single rope and pulley. But here comes the problem because in this situation the pan mirror has no solid holding point, so it starts spinning like crazy. To minimize this problem, switch to custom mode and turn off the pan axis. But keep in mind that in this situation you cannot control the pan in any way because Ronin will start spinning again. Second option, replace the regular rope with some kind of flat rope. A wide flat rope or something like a slug line has the advantage over the rope that it doesn't spin so much. It will give you some better performance, however not as good as the last option which is two ropes. Using two ropes completely solves the problem of rotation. In this situation I use a 30mm tube as a base for the Ronin and a few clamps. Rope creates a solid point on which you can hang the Ronin and you have full control over every axis including the pen which was impossible with one rope. In this situation we use Raven Eye and control the Ronin with Force Mobile in custom mode and also all axes following off. Force Mobile it is one of the options to control the movements of the Ronin using a mobile device. Actually it works in a such a way that it repeats every move you make with your smartphone. So to make the movements perfect and smooth we mount the smartphone on a tripod and control the Ronin like a regular camera on a tripod. I can honestly say that I have controlled the Ronin's movements in every possible way. But this is the best by far. Absolutely brilliant. In all the shots where we used the Ronin on the ropes, we also used 3D focus, because it was a lot of quick shots towards the actors and subjects and to be honest it would be incredibly hard to do it in a different way. We will definitely need a focus assistant, wireless follow focus or another camera with out of focus lens. And at this point I have a conclusion. Look how much more advanced tools we have today. For example, RS2, Raven Eye, 3D Focus, Active Track Mode. Think how many cool shots you are able to take with these virtual assistants alone or in a small group. And probably a year ago, taking this shot in this way would be impossible. So what I want to make you realize is how many cool shots you can take with one piece of equipment. Of course what we have done today is probably only a small part of what Ronin can do, but I'm talking about it today so you can understand how many tools you just don't need anymore. Also, I think all of you know that there is a thin line between necessary equipment and equipment that starts to complicate your works. The paradox of choice, which is a situation when you have too much great, expensive and good equipment. And instead of working on a film or on a good story, you wonder which lens you should choose for example. And also keep that in mind because it's actually true and a lot of good filmmakers talk about it, that limits can sometimes be more creative than a truck full of gear. So choose carefully, choose consciously and try to work only with a gear or equipment that you feel you really need. And as I show you today, for me the RS2 is just such a piece of equipment. Guys, I really hope this was helpful for you. As always, thanks for so many nice comments and messages and see you in the next episode.